Good afternoon, everyone. I am Sunbebe. I'm a PhD student from Ghent University. My report today is about the strength influence factor of slag and flat ash based ugly activated materials. As we know, ugly activated materials have attracted more and more attention as a potential replacement for cement materials. The most popular precursor of ugly activated materials are blast furnace, slag, and flat ash. Slag based ugly activated materials and flat ash based ugly activated materials are both known to have some disadvantage, such as poor workability, short setting time, shrinkage, slow strength development. Uh, well, a large amount of research have shown that good a synergy between mechanical property and durability could be obtained by adding uh, flat ash in uh, slag based ugly activated materials. Among all the uh, activators, sodium hydroxide and sodium silicate are the most commonly used alkaline activators. Sodium hydroxide solution could provide a high pH environment um, to accelerate the reaction process, while sodium silicate could provide silicon monomer and form a denser structure. Previous studies have shown that a combination of sodium hydroxide and sodium silicate who create the highest strength of ugly activated materials. Uh, these materials possess lots of advantage, but there seems to be no particular mixed design procedure for uh, slag and flat ash based ugly activated materials because the mixed design parameters are actually interlinked and complex. The effect of different parameters on strengths of ugly activated materials have been studied by lots of researchers. As summarized in the table, uh, the factors that have been studied include a uh, liquid to binder ratio, uh, molar ratio, uh, molar concentration of sodium hydroxide, uh, sodium silicon to sodium hydroxide ratio, uh, erect after selection. Four of the most important factors of strength are listed in the table. Instead of using confusing parameters, these factors could basically represent the initial iron concentration of the materials. How do control factors influence the strength of uh, slag and blood ash based ugly activated materials? To better understand this question, the mine reaction products are studied and listed in the table. Among other products, CASH gel and NASH gel are two main reaction products. To be precise, the structure and amount of CASH gel and NASH gel actually determines the strength of materials. The formation of uh, these two kinds of gels are shown in the picture. As we know, the reaction product at different age is closely related to the concentration of ions in the system. Within the dissolution and condensation, uh, my reaction ions such as silicon, calcium, alumina have different effect on the formation of CASH gel and NASH gel. While the concentration of those main reaction ions are determined by the control factors. As one of the most important factors, the effect of a slag to binder ratio on strengths of slag to a slag and flat ash based ugly activated materials is shown in the graph. Here, the binder means a uh, slag and flat ash. As we can see, there is a strong linear relationship between slag to binder ratio and 28 day strength of ugly activated materials. The higher the content of slag, the higher the strength, because increasing slag content is associated with an increase of calcium and a decrease of alumina in the reaction system. Since the calcium oxide silicon bonds are weaker than alumina oxide silicon bonds, this might lead to faster dissolution. On the other hand, calcium oxide as the my chemical component of slag helps the formation of CASH gel. Uh, CASH gel along with NASH gel can effectively reduce the porosity and condense the microstructure of materials. For the effect of sodium oxide to binder ratio on slag and flat ash based ugly activated materials, we can see that the strength first increased and decreased with the sodium oxide to binder ratio. 
this is because higher content of sodium hydroxide uh, residue increased the dissolution of slag and flat ash uh, particles. The destruction calculation period of NaSH gel is also accelerated since the released monomers have higher tendency to be connected. But uh, when sodium oxide to binding ratio exceeds a specific value, the concentration of hydroxide radical could be too high. So the dissolution of calcium hydroxide is reduced and a thin layer of calcium hydroxide will be formed on the surface of slag particles. This layer could stop further reaction of the particles. Uh, but because uh, calcium is less capable of uh, reacting with alumina and silicon and form a CASH gel. Besides, its excessive hydroxide radical called C uh, alumina, a silicon gel precipitates at very early stage in the, on the surface of flat ash particles. So the subsequent polymerization is hindered and the strength uh, decrease also. Uh, what's more excessive uh, uh, sodium may also cause efflorescence and reduce the strength to some extent. To obtain the highest strength, the optimal value of sodium oxide to binary ratio in slag based ugly activated materials and fly ash based ugly activated materials is a 5.5 percentage to a 8 percentage and 7 percentage to 10 percentage respectively. Uh, while the optimal value of sodium oxide to binding ratio in slag and flat ash based ugly activated materials is still unknown. The effect of sodium, silicon oxide to sodium oxide ratio on um, slag and flat ash based ugly activated materials is shown in the graph. Uh, with the increase of silicon oxide to sodium oxide ratio, the strength first increase then decrease. Uh, this is probably because with more structure forming elements, Silicon available in the solution, uh, the reaction products could not only form on the surface of slag particles, but also in the solution. So a denser microstructure could be generated. With the formation of more silicon oxide silicon bonds, um, and these bonds are stronger than silicon oxide alumina bonds, a higher degree of polymerization uh, will be uh, created. Um, but when silicon oxide to sodium oxide ratio is at a particular value, the strength uh, began to uh, decrease. And this is because excessive silicon oxide to a sodium oxide ratio could hinder the further dissolution of reaction irons. The silicon layer might form on the surface of uh, precursor particles. Less dissolution of uh, these reaction irons eventually prevent the formation of CASH gel. On the other hand, excessive silicon oxide species could form polymerized silicon oxide and precipitate. Uh, it might depress the precipitation of zeolite crystal and hinder the polymerization of flat ash in the subsequent process. To obtain the highest strength, the optimal value of silicon oxide to sodium oxide ratio in slag based ugly activated materials and flat ash based ugly activated materials is 0.85 to 0.1 and 0.6 to 1, respectively, while the optimal value of silicon oxide to sodium oxide ratio in slag and flat ash based ugly activated material is still unknown. Uh, the study also shows that a uh, lipo to binder ratio has relatively less effect on the strength of um, ugly activated materials. This is because water is consumed in the dissolution stage while released again in the polymerization process. Uh, from the reaction point of view, less water leads to a slightly higher compressive strength, but this effect is neglectable. Ne uh, negligible uh, compared with the effect of those control factors, uh, but still water content is an important factor in considering the workability of slag and flat ash based ugly activated materials. It is recommended to use the water to binder ratio instead of a uh, liquid to binder ratio to obtain more precise results for further study. Uh, because a uh, liquid to binder ratio might lead to incomparable and unpredictable test results. 
for example, uh, for the acrylic solution with high uh, sodium oxide content, the liquid to binder ratio might have less impact on the strength. Uh, this is all about the influence factors and effect mechanism. Thank you very much for your listening.